Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jessica Flynn and I am the owner and maker of Flynn Sisters Boutique. And today we are going to be taking on this hand painted Northern Lights design. I'm really excited to share it with you guys. I've never made a Northern Lights cup and I've been making cups for like six years now and I've never done this one. I've had a lot of requests for a tutorial like this so I hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, it's almost Christmas. Merry Christmas and happy holidays, everybody. And I am so excited to see you guys in the new year and creating new content and having more fun with you guys in 2024. So that's enough chit chat for me. Let's go ahead and get started. <music> you guys so today i'm working with a 40 ounce what i guess is like a simply modern dupe i don't remember where i found this please do not come for me i don't have a link for it you can use any cup you want though i'm going to be taping off the handle for this cup you could unscrew it and remove it but i i didn't want to deal with that and i just feel like this is easier for what i'm i'm creating today uh this piece of electrical tape will stick around after we do all the prep work up until epoxy. So I wanna make sure that it's easy to remove after I epoxy, so I'll make a little tab. I'm gonna tape off the remainder of that handle with just some painter's tape, and then I'll move on to tape off the bottom of my tumbler. You don't have to tape off the bottom of your tumbler if you don't want to, but I am because it's gonna make my life easier. So after I run that strip of electrical tape around the bottom rim of my cup, I'm going to run it through my edge trimmer with about, oh, I don't know, I think an eighth of an inch, maybe closer to a quarter of an inch of a gap there from the very bottom. It's going to give me a nice crispy edge, as you see here. And then we'll tape off the remainder of that bottom with just some painter's tape. Then I'll move on to prepping the surface of my cup. We're just going to lightly sand all the areas that we are going to be painting and epoxying. After I lightly sand everything and get a good scuff on it, I'm going to clean it up with some rubbing alcohol and a paper towel. And now we're ready to base paint. All right, and I'm just using Rust-Oleum flat white spray paint for the base today. And I'm gonna do two light coats to get really good even coverage. And then as soon as that's dry, I am going to do a line of black flat spray paint along the top rim. And that'll be kind of the base for our night sky. That'll be the darkest part of the sky in our design. Now we're ready to start painting with our alcohol inks. I'm gonna be using Hades, Absinthe, and Minty Sagey Kim. These are three colors from Jen's Crafted Gems alcohol inks. Here I'm kind of imagining and mapping out how I want our horizon and night sky to look and the proportions. Once I get a decent idea of that, I'm gonna go in with my white alcohol marker. Excuse me, it's an acrylic marker. <laughs> this is a Posca brand white acrylic marker. And I'm kind of drawing what's like the rough draft for my northern lights and how they're going to present in the sky. You don't want to do too many lines as to like busy the design. And I want to position these in a way that's aesthetically pleasing for a tumbler. So we're kind of mimicking a swirl. And in my paper plate here, I'm going to use just my lightest colors first. So we're going to do the absinthe and the minty sagey kim and then I've got some plain rubbing alcohol in a medicine cup. You'll see where I've blotted colors and stuff from earlier because I did make one of these cups in a smaller version to practice so that's why I've got all this stuff out. But you'll see I have the paper towel right next to my little palette there so I can test the colors before I put them on the cup. You'll see that I kind of water down the colors with the alcohol ink because I want them to be really, really muted around the white lines. So with our lightest colors, we're going to flank all those white lines. These will be the highlights of our northern lights. And here and there, I will start a little bit of a gradient with some of the darkest colors. But really the first step is to outline all the white lines with the lightest colors in our palette. 
Once I'm done with that, I'm going to move on to the darker colors in my palette and start to blend between the dark color and the light color. I used a couple different paint brushes for this and I think when you're painting with alcohol ink in this style it's a balance of how juicy you want your brush with the alcohol and how much uh, kind of blotting you're going to do on your paper to control the saturation of color. That's really the battle here and it's really easy to let those darker shadowy areas of the painting kind of overtake the lighter highlights. So just be careful and anything that you don't like in your painting you can just kind of remove with a clean brush and rubbing alcohol and go over it again. This also helps to add some depth and dimension to your painting. And it does take a little bit of practice, I think, but ultimately you can't really go wrong with this. We are making an abstract rendition of the Northern Light Sky, so it doesn't have to be perfect really. And it's gonna balance out when we add in some details later on with our acrylic markers. So just keep that in mind. Don't kill yourself trying to get this perfect. When I get to the bottom, I'm going to really make an effort to mute those colors to be as light as possible. So sometimes that just means dipping your brush into the plain rubbing alcohol and using that to kind of further blend down the colors. You don't even have to add additional ink to your brush because we want the lightest part of our painting to be towards the mountains. That's where, you know, that moonlight and the reflection is going to be. So just keep that in mind as you're trudging along here. Once we get all our colors kind of roundabouts where we want them to be, we're gonna go in with the black. Let those colors dry for a little bit. I did use my heat gun to speed up the drying process to make sure that they were really kind of set in place before I went in with the black. I'm going in with just straight black ink along the top rim to really darken the darkest parts of our night sky. I do apologize because for a majority of this part of the video, I was out of frame while I was filming. I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay, so you're just kind of going to go around with the black up towards the top and you're going to let it trickle down into the night sky to blend between where the northern lights are flowing through and where the darkest parts of our sky is to create some contrast. But I caution you, be very, very conservative with that black ink. I would almost water it down a little bit the further down you go with some rubbing alcohol. And less is more, because if you need more, you can always add more, but with the black, you can't take away. That's why I save it for last, because it can really overtake the design if you're not careful. So I do it heaviest up at the top and then I just wet my brush with a little rubbing alcohol uh, to pull it down further into uh, the mid sections of the cup. At this point, we're gonna go in with our lightest color again, which in this case is the Minty Sagey Kim. And I just watered that down a little bit more with some clean rubbing alcohol and this is where I'm just going to kind of blend some of the lines a little bit more near the northern lights swirls make sure that that's really a highlight in our design and just add even more contrast my husband also said it needed more green uh, to really come across as northern lights so that's why I'm adding some more of that minty sagey color in there I did let the inks dry for a little while before I moved on to painting my stars. For the stars, we're just going to use a fine point white acrylic marker from Posca. And I'm just going wild with the stars. I feel like this really pulls the look together and really helps communicate what it is that <laughs> we did here. That this is in fact the northern lights. This is the night sky. Uh, so just go wild with those with those stars. I think they're so cute. And next we're going to paint in our tree silhouettes. I'm using a black acrylic marker and I'm going to start by just picking where I want to place my trees. Keeping in mind I am going to add a decal later 
and I'm also going to add a wolf howling at the moon. So I want to make sure I have space for all that and I don't want the trees to go too tall. We don't want them too short either, but you make your trees however you want. After you draw those straight lines, you're going to just scribble from the top down to the bottom. <laughs> don't let your scribble go too out of control and you're going to be mimicking kind of the tapered shape of a tree. After you do your scribbling, you can go in and run refine the branches and the silhouette so that it doesn't look like you just made a line in a scribble, okay? Uh, it's really easy to do. Yes, you could do vinyl for this instead, but this is so easy, you guys, and with a design like this, it just makes sense, and I don't want to struggle with vinyl along the curve of this huge cup, okay? So I'm just going to hand paint it, and I was blown away at how fun and easy this was and how good it looked. You know, like I've always been someone who's like, oh, I can't paint, I can't draw, I'll just use vinyl, uh, but I gave it a try. I got some confidence, which was really scary because I worked really hard on that alcohol ink painting, um, but I love how it turned out. Now, guys, if you want to epoxy first over that alcohol ink and then do your trees, like if you're afraid you're going to mess up, totally smart to do it that way. I was not patient and I just wanted to go for it, but I'm sure glad that I did because I love how it turned out. After you paint all your trees, you're going to move on to the mountain line. So the mountain line is really just a scribble along the horizon of your little nature scene here. <laughs> All, again, keep in mind you're going to add a little wolf howling at the moon if you want to add that in your little Northern Lights universe. Okay, so I just freehanded that mountain line and then I colored in the bottom. If your marker is a little dried up, of course, you can hand paint it with just some regular black acrylic paint, uh, to, you know, to really darken it up and so you don't see any of the brush strokes. Next, I'm going to paint my moon. I'm really bad at drawing a circle, so I'm going to make a little circle template with a one-inch hole punch and some painter's tape. You can use vinyl on your Cricut to do this, but who wants to fire that up? <laughs> so... Yeah, I just made a little hole with some painter's tape, tried to decide where I wanted that moon in my sky, placed the painter's tape down and colored it in with a white acrylic marker. If you wanted to get fancy, you could dot in some gray to really look like a moon. I don't, I don't think I did all that. I think I just poorly painted <laughs> this circle. Uh, I did get some bleed through on this one. I just cleaned it up with a black marker afterwards. No big deal. Next, I added my little wolf. I cut him at about one and a half inches with permanent black vinyl with my Cricut. And I'm going to put him on this mountaintop here. Now, don't worry if you can't find a flat place on your mountaintop to place the wolf. Just put it down and then you can go in with your black acrylic marker and give him something a little better to sit on. Like you see here. And there's my wolf howling at the moon. Lastly, I'm going to add a Wanderlust decal. I cut this out of white permanent vinyl. And I know this is super risky putting this decal on directly onto the paint. So again, if you wanted to wait until after you did a coat of epoxy, that would probably be smart. I'm just impatient. I want to get it all done in one layer. So I'm just going to go for it. I took some of the sticky off of my transfer tape in hopes that it wouldn't pull up any of my paint. It did not, so that was cool. I will say that this cup had been drying overnight before I went in to add that decal, so just, you know, something to consider. Uh, but that's it for the design. Now we're ready for epoxy, and I couldn't be more pleased with how this turned out so much fun. Okay guys, for this first epoxy coat, I am going to take off all the blue painter's tape first, but I'm going to leave the black electrical tape that I initially put down when we first started. That's just because it's going to be easier to take off after I epoxy. And you'll see that I have my turner off while I'm trying to work around this handle, and then I will epoxy the remainder of my cup. 
No, we do not need to seal anything. As long as those inks and paint have had a good, you know, overnight time to dry, they're good to go. I did put some saran wrap around the handle just to make sure I didn't get any extra drips on there and it stayed clean and was easy enough to remove after I epoxied, so that was cool. If you get any epoxy on that handle on accident, you can just wipe it off really quick with some rubbing alcohol and a paper towel or even a baby wipe works fine. I'm also going to sprinkle in a little bit of glitter into this coat. This glitter color is called Jenny. It's from my friend Myra's glitter, Batty Glitter. I will link it down below. But I just wanted to add in a little bit of sparkle, a little razzle dazzle into the design. I didn't want the glitter to overtake the design though. So that's why I didn't add in like an epoxy additive type glitter because I just thought it would take away from all the depth and, and what we've created here. So that's why I chose that. But you could put whatever you want into your night sky. It's totally up to you. So here we are just removing the tape after about 30 minutes of this turning very carefully. Yes, I got some epoxy on my hands. Yes, I should have been wearing gloves. Yes, I felt like I was playing Operation. <laughs> if you guys have a better way of messing around with this dang handle, put your put your advice in the comments. We'd love to hear it. Uh, so anyway, we just repeated that for the next couple coats. Uh, I did put three coats of epoxy on this. I did sand the rim after the second coat of epoxy like I normally would. I didn't show that in this video because it's already a pretty lengthy video and you guys see me do that in all my other videos. So that's pretty much it for this tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I absolutely love how this turned out and I can't wait to see what you guys create. So tag me in your creations. Please leave a comment if you guys enjoyed this. Give us a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. All that fun stuff that helps support our channel so that I can keep making really cool content for you guys because I have really been enjoying getting back to making videos. I hope you're having an amazing holiday season and I probably won't see you until next year. Holiday New Year's joke. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Stupid. I love you guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. And a big thank you to all of our Flynn Sisters exclusive members. Thank you for your pledge. Your support means the world to our channel. If you love this video, you could check out our last video here. Also be sure to find us on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, and of course subscribe for all our new videos that come out every Wednesday and Saturday. Thanks so much for watching. See you soon.